sick in prison. And so we want to start uh, implementing those things. And I hope and pray that you, you join arms with us and help us as we strive to uh, turn this community upside down for the Lord. Amen. And so we're grateful again to see you this morning. Let us pray. Dear Father God, thank you again for this morning. Thank you for this, uh, this service. We hope and pray that what we've done so far uh, has been pleasing and acceptable in your sight, and that most importantly, that you be glorified. So, Father, to continue to uh, help the light shine in us and through us, God, as we uh, go throughout the service, uh, help us be the church you want us to be. Father, we're grateful of uh, uh, coming to this place and time where it's been a journey uh, here for us at Clover Land. We've been out of our building for a year and a half and so forth, and this uh, allowing us to uh, be here today, we we're, we're grateful. And uh, most importantly, that uh, our members, some of our members here uh, are with us to worship you in spirit and truth. And for those who are watching virtually, we we're praying for you as well. We're grateful for this opportunity. We just ask God that you continue to let the light shine on us and through us. Help us to be the church that's uh, that's a uh, seek missions and, and see how important it is for us to serve our communities and be in our communities to, to serve those who are in dire need. And so we just want to uh, be that church. Help us to do that right now uh, and to strengthen us, oh God. Give us the wisdom and knowledge that only comes from above. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thou prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup running over. That's Psalms 23 and verse 5. May Lord, the Lord have a blessing to those who will and read it of his word. Good morning. Good morning. Let us all meditate. Amen. Let us all pray. Could we be standing here? We come to you this morning with our heads and most humble hearts. Father, thanking you for allowing us to be here this morning. Father, it's been over a year since we've seen face to face here in this building. We want to thank you, Father, for giving us this opportunity this morning. First of all, Father, we want to ask you to forgive us for all our sins whether been part of, been by word, thoughts, or deeds. Father, we want to thank all the sisters and brothers that is here. With you, Father, we have made this possible. We want to thank you, Father, for continuing watching over us, continuing keeping us. Father, we know there is nothing that we have done we thank you, Father, for allowing us to open up our eyes this morning to see another day. Thank you, Father, for Brother Bruce and his teaching this morning. Thank you, Father, for our minister, Brother Barry Woods. We ask you, Father, continue to bless these brothers to continue preaching your word. 
king and best need brother than their families, Father. Help all of us, Father. We need you, Father, we need you now. Yes, Continue watching over this church and all its members. Continue keeping us faithful, Father, to your word. Father, after this life is gone, we cannot do anything else, Father. We're hoping and praying you give us a home in your kingdom so we can praise you for ever and ever. Always Christ in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Ask me not what you get to see. Oh, 
table. That's our, our first point. Thou preparest a table before me. That means, church, that God sets the table. Amen. Who, who sets the table in your house? Amen. Well, you say it all depends, but it, it depends on what, Brother Harris? Well, it depends on who's coming. Now, now, if, if no one's coming, Lord, and sometimes Brenda will let me set the table, so, so let me. And, and I never can get it right. And, and now, here I am, a, a semi-intelligent man, at least I think I am, and I can, I, I, I never can remember uh, just which side the silver goes on. And on every time I think I've got it right, she said, you didn't did it wrong again. Either I put the spoon church on the wrong side of the fork or the, or the fork or the knife or something like that. I don't know. But there's a pattern to it is what I'm saying. And it's very simple. Now she said, now look, how can you be a preacher of a, of a, of a church and how can you be a college graduate and you can't even get the civil right? Mm -hmm. Now, but, but the church somehow, I just got a middle block about that, Brother Williams. But even sometimes, the children will set the table. My dear friend, when company is, is coming, uh, generally Brandy will set the table. And, and no longer do we have the, the, the placemates. We have the linen tablecloths. And no longer do we have the glass we get the crystal. And no longer do we have just the uh, everyday dishes or paper plate, Brother Harris. Uh, the best china comes out, out of there. And, and, and we'll be lit, lighting up candles on the table and fresh flowers and generally, you know, that, that wonderful recipe and every, everything is just right and the, the music church and will be playing softly in the background and, and when our guests come in, we say, you'll just have to take us like we are. <laughs> church, uh, you know, we really love to set the table. Do you know why you set the table that way, sisters? You know why you do that? Do you know why you prepare your table when you have visitors over? You know why you do that, ladies? You, you to honor the person who's coming. To, to honor the, the person who's coming. You see, here's what David is saying in Psalm 23. God has put on an apron, says the God, has, God Jehovah has, has prepared a table for, for me and you this morning. The Lord of glory has, has prepared a table for us. He loves me and he welcomes me. I'm special to him and, you're, and, and, and you as well. And then the next phrase he says, Thou anointest my head with oil. The next slide. In, in the Middle Eastern uh, home, there are in a, uh, there in a very wealthy home will be a cruise of oil right by the door. Very expensive ornament, perfumed, and it will be there for special occasions. And when a very important guest will come into their home, Global Land, uh, maybe a family who had been gone for a long time. And, uh, or someone that you dearly love, someone you that you wanted to see, you would, uh, you would, uh, the guest would come and, and, and greet his friend, and, and there will be a kiss on on either cheek, and and then he will reach into the bowl of ointment, all right, and he will put that ointment on the face and the head and the hair of his guest, and it will per perfume that person and it will, will refresh them. They called it the anointing of the head. And the rest uh, of the feast, that person, brothers and sisters, would smell that sweet perfume, that ointment that was on his or her head. They do something like this in Hawaii. If you've ever been in Hawaii, when you come into a, a home in Hawaii, brothers and sisters, uh, they take a ring of flowers called a lehi, and, and they put it around your neck. You know the little flower you see when people go to Hawaii? And the whole time you're there, Cloverland, you're just smelling those flowers that are, that's around your neck. It's their, it's their way of saying, we love you. You're special. You're welcome. Now, if the lady, church, uh, from the next door come over to buy an egg or some flour or something, they didn't, they didn't anoint her head and so forth, but it was something special. Remember there are uh, the, the, uh, in the New Testament, the Lady Mary, uh, who took the alabaster box of, 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 of appointment and anointed the heirs of Jesus and even his feet. There was a man there named Simon, and Church Simon uh, and others were complaining, complaining, and Jesus said, Simon, you, you didn't even anoint my head when I came into your house. You didn't do this. That is, Simon, you did not show me 
that, that reverence and that respect. But this woman was, has not only anointed my head, but my feet with this, this ointment and this perfume. And church, you see, it, it says that you're very, very special, and this anointing was to refresh. And just to make you feel good, you're special, is what I'm saying. And then the last thing he says in this verse, he says, not only was there the, the prepare table and the anointing of the head, uh, brothers and sisters, but there was something else that was so very wonderful. There was the overflowing cup. That's my next point. My cup running over. Now let me give you the background for this church. Uh, in the Bible times, they didn't have the hotels and motels and the restaurants and the, the things that we have today. Now there are, are a few inns, uh, but most of them were dirty and filthy. And, and the few that were there were crowded church. For example, with, with Jesus, there was no room in the inn. And uh, they were expensive and many times very immoral. But there was a law in the land, the law of hospitality, that if you were traveling and you came to a man's house in the middle of the day and you asked for food, it would be absolutely unthinkable that he would go, let you go without feeding you first. It was just simply, folks, uh, the law of the land that a, that a stranger come and eat about even time. It's in the evening that he sits down and you, you give him this meal. Now, I suppose you have done your duty. You've been respect, respectful. You've been nice. You fed him and it's time for him to go home. But suppose you really have come to, to like this person, Coleman. Even you, you strike up a friendship and you're very interested and he's an interesting conversationalist. Or you just feel for whatever reason that, that, that you want him to stay. Here's the way they would do it, Coleman. The host would uh, take this cup at the end of the meal and it had been uh, already embedded and empty and the, and, and the host would take the picture, says the Lord. And if it was the time for this man to go, he would fill that cup half full. And what that means is, mister, when you finish your dessert, you got to hit the road. <laughs> I mean, that's it. it it's, the, it's the cup is half full. It wouldn't have to say, he wouldn't have to say a word. But if, if the host would come with the pitcher and begin to pour into that cup and will pour it up, up to the brim of that cup and then just let it overflow and run over, brothers and sisters, it will say you're special. Oh, y'all not getting it, are you? It was saying, I love you. You are invited to stay in my home overnight as a special guest. That's what David is saying in this text. David is saying, church, oh, uh, uh, look, Jehovah has prepared a table for me. I'm special. Jehovah has anointed my head. He loves me. My cup runneth over. He's showing hospitality to me. He's my friend. And of course, who is our Jehovah? Well, our Jehovah is the Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd. And Jesus said in John 15, verse 15, I don't call you servants, I call you friends. Say amen. Isn't that beautiful, brothers and sisters? Don't you, don't you think negatively about a friend, do you? You know, what is a friend in a way? If, 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 if it is a friend someday, somebody says a friend is somebody who knows all about you and loves you just the same. Or, or somebody is saying that a friend is someone who, who goes on liking you, no matter how successful either one of you becomes. And, or, or here's a good definition, church. A friend it is somebody who believes in you when you have ceased to believe in yourself. Or a friend is a source of celebration when you come to believe that there's nothing to celebrate. A friend, church, it is somebody uh, uh, who comes to your side when you when you call and often answers even before you call. And of course, we know that all of those things pictures the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I right about it? The friend of sinners. Someone has said, church, a friend is somebody who doesn't go on a diet when you're fat. <laughs> Amen. They don't want to hurt your feelings. We all need friends, don't we, Lord? And what the scripture is showing us here in Psalm 23, verse 5, that the Lord is a friend. The Lord is a friend, church. What a friend today we 
have in Jesus. He prepares a table. He, he anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Don't, don't you ever let the devil get to you thinking negatively about God. And so there are three things I want to give you. I want you to think about the Lord. As we think about the Lord in this verse of Scripture, church, first of all, as you think about the prepare table that I talked about, I want you to think of the fullness that we have in, in Christ. That's the next point. The fullness that we have in Christ. That is, church, that Jesus meets the deepest hungers of our hearts. And, and church, I've come by to stop and tell you, he does. Jesus Christ satisfies the, deep in long, the deepest longings, the, the deepest hungers of your heart. Jesus satisfies that. Did you know that the Bible is just kind of a, a continual feast from Genesis right on to Revelation? They're always having suppers and dinners and banquets and feasts all the way through the Bible. And, and sometimes, you know what, church, people criticize us for the fact that we like to get together and fellowship around men. You know, they say, Chloe, I always love to eat. Friend, that's so biblical. It's so biblical. I was thinking about all the feasts and the meals that that our Lord prepared for his disciples, the good shepherd. I was thinking, for example, about how the Lord Jesus Christ fed the 5,000 and, and he performed a miracle to feed the 5,000, a few fish and loaves, and he fed 5,000 people. He prepared a re replenishment when there was the enemy of inadequacy. And you know, church, he, he's done that for me so many times. Church, I feel so inadequate and I run out of resources. And the Lord just prepares a table before me. And church, when frankly, folk, folks, I need it, but I don't deserve it. And bless God, amen, I can't even explain it. So this is brother, how he meets my needs day by day. And I'm not just talking about physical needs, church, those, but more than that, I want to ask you a question this morning. Was there any way that you could explain the feeding of the 5,000? Now, not, not any way except God, isn't that right? Let, let me ask you this question. Was it, was it, there, about, was it there about your life that, that cannot be explained apart from God? Do you know that, that, that that's the only part that you, can, that you can all believe? Only the unexplainable is what? Is that what you want to know? God wants you to see in him. See, only your religious friends or your people who think you're religious are not going to see that. That's not going to convince a friend. Uh, but when he sees God, who is supernaturally meeting your needs and preparing you for a table of replenishment, then you're going to be believed. Not only, church, a table of replenishment, but what about a table of restoration? Do you remember when uh, Simon Peter cursed the sword and uh, he denied the Lord Jesus and was crucified he was raised from the dead the disciples were discouraged and they went they were weren't sure half believing half doubting and Peter said I, I'll go fishing the others went with them and they just went back to their, their duty they, they'd gone back to Galilee and, and had said tarry uh, in Jerusalem until you've been in due with power from on high they were there just they were there where they were disobedient and disconsolate and, and, and there, there they were fishing and they were fish they had fished all night just discouraged and depressed and hadn't caught anything. And boy, I've been on, on some of those uh, fishing times where you don't catch anything with you. And then Jesus said, Hey, have you caught anything standing on the seashore? They didn't know who it was, so then they, and he said, Don't you hate people when they do that? Have you caught anything when you go fishing? And you know you haven't caught them with the week. And they said, no. He said, uh, well, why don't you, you cast your net on the other side? They hadn't realized it was Jesus yet. And, and, and they did. And do you remember what they called all those fish? And Peter, he knew it was Jesus afterwards. He said, it's the Lord. I, I thought you were dead. And Peter took off his fisherman's coat and jumped in the water and made his way over there to meet the Lord Jesus. And when he got there, Cobalt, what had the Lord done? Prepare a table. See, there were fish on those hot coils and fresh bread. Now, I can understand the fish he was the, that, that was there by Galilee. But, and I can understand where he got the fish, but where did he get that bread? 
See, I really don't know, but, but, but you know what, what I like to think, church? I like to think he turned stones into bread. You know, as, the, as Satan tried to tell him, he said, I, I'm going to turn those stones into bread. I'll do it when I want to, is what he's telling Satan, not when you want me to. And so these days, he, would, he, he said, well, come, and we're going to be caught up, church. Uh, caught up, sweet up to meet the Lord in the air. We're going to sit down at the table. Listen, friend, don't you think negatively about God. When the Bible describes our salvation, the Bible doesn't describe our salvation as a funeral, but as a feast. Thou preparest a table before me. And so, first of all, I want you to think of the fullness that we have in Christ. But now there's a second thing I want you to think about, the next point, that, that ought to make you feel good about God. I want you to think about the freshness we have in Christ. The freshness we have in Christ. That thou anointest my head with oil. The freshness we have in Christ. Now, what was that for, Brother Woods? Well, my dear friend, that was to refresh you. To refresh you. Psalm 19, uh, 92, verse 10 says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And how about this one, church? Psalm 45 and verse 7 says, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, thy God has anointed thee. And are you ready for this? With the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Fresh oil. The oil of gladness, he tells us. God anoints us, Sister Wilson. With that, he anoints our head with oil. What does that tell me, preacher? It tells me that there ought to be a refreshing in your life. There ought to be a sweet aroma in your life. There ought to be just an oil of gladness uh, 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 about serving the Lord in your life. And, uh, now, hey, don't feel sorry about me. I always tell people in the world, don't feel sorry about me for being a Christian. Because I am a Christian. I have a wonderful time. So that I, I want to I tell you something. His mercies are new every morning. Every morning, church, he anoints me with fresh oil. When I was preparing this message, I got to thinking, church. <laughs> I was about this, and I was sitting at my desk. And, uh, and I thought, is this true? Is there fresh oil every morning? And I had to put down my pen and lift my hands and, and just, just praise the Lord. The Lord, it, 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 it is true, he said. It is true. I love him better today, and I really believe that that than ever before. And I can say with my heart and my soul over that. It's still exciting to me, and it's more exciting to me. I was out yesterday without, and I was uh, walking, and and I was praying, and I went out to the church and walked and prayed for about an hour, and almost made a fool of myself just praising the Lord. Just, I mean, just so happy in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I thank God, church, for the. For the freshness in Christ. Other things get old, church. But friend, he gets just get better. See, he gets sweeter. He gets more real. He satisfied our every need. Yes, there's the fullness in Christ. He prepares a table. Uh, there's the freshness in Christ. The fragrance of Christ. The beauty of Christ. The reality of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't you ever, church, let the devil get you to thinking negatively about God. And I'll tell you, there's a third thing that this verse tells me. In Psalm 23 and verse 5, that makes me feel good about God. My next slide. Not only the fullness in Christ and the freshness in Christ, but the freeness, the freeness that we have in Christ. My cup runneth over. Oh, my dear friend, listen to me. When he gives, he gives so freely, so lavishly, so wondrously. God is a God of the open hand and the open heart. Now, how free God is. God is not stingy, is he? God doesn't hold back. You see, in that good, in that passage on the good shepherd in John 10, verse 10, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, I come that you might have life, but not just life. I come that you might have life and have it how? More abundantly. Now, not only does he add years to our life, brothers and sisters, he adds life to our years. Oh, you didn't get that, did you? And it's an abundant life, church. And I was thinking about this the other day. The abundance that he gives to us. And you know, it's so true. When Jesus turned the water into wine in John chapter 2, 
Do you know what the Bible scholar tells us? Do you know how much wine he made that day of, of, of the best wine? So, so then, 120 gallons. The, 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 the history says, now folks, they didn't need 120 gallons of wine, did they? I hope not, but he just, the cup overflowed for the weight. Now let me give you another example. When Jesus fed the 5,000 with a little boy sack lunch, that was wonderful, am I right? But now wait a minute, after he fed the 5,000, then there was 12 baskets full left over. Think about it, church. Our cup runs over. Listen, he speaks of peace, but not just peace. Peace that passes all understanding. He speaks of joy, but not just joy. Joy unspeakable, full of glory. And when the prodigal son came back, he said, bring forth the, and kill the fatted cow. Not just kill a chicken, the fatted cow. Not just a cow, the best. And he said, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. He's not talking about here about necessities. He's talking about luxuries. He's talking about out of his infinite goodness, church, and fullness, he just keeps on giving and giving and giving. Have you ever thought about God that way? He just keeps on giving and giving as the giving God, as the lavish God. Oh, he freely, oh, he freely, have you freely, have you received the freeness that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ? See, church, God doesn't measure his blessings drop by drop. Our cup runs over, the Bible says. I heard about a little lady, my mom was done, who went to the bank to cash a check. In church, uh, she got her money and she stayed there and, and she counted it all. Then she counted it again. Then she counted it three times. And the teller said, what's the matter, lady? Isn't it all there? She said, it just is. Now, friend, I want to tell you that God just throws in a few extra dollars. He just, my cup just runs over. I mean, uh, he doesn't measure his blessings and how, how we ought to be like that, church. Uh, you see, the Bible says, freely you have received, freely you give. You know what, but some folks I know what want to do. When God gives and when the cup runs over, they don't let it run. Do you know why they, 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 want, a big, they want a bigger cup, a bigger cup? You know, church, you don't have to have a bigger cup. Friend, listen to me. If your cup is running over, let it run over. Because uh, remember the man in the Bible who was uh, prop, uh, whose property brought forth so much, and he said, "I have no room to restore my goods." He said, "I know what I'll do. I'll put my barns and build bigger barns." And I don't, I don't. Uh, he said, "I don't want it to run over. I don't want it to. I don't want to bless anybody else. I want it all for myself. I, I want it all for me." All for me. Now, old friend, listen to me today. Freely have received, freely give. Let the cup run over and let it be a blessing to somebody else. I heard these words the other day. I remember the, the son. I, I, didn't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember quite the words. It says, and this is the way it goes. It says, his love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundary known unto man. For out of his infinite riches is Jesus he giveth, he giveth, and he giveth again. What do we have today in the Lord Jesus? Oh, my dear friend, we have fullness in Christ. He prepares the table. What do we have in the Lord Jesus? We have freshness in Christ. He anoints our head. What do we have in the Lord Jesus? We have freeness in Christ. Our cups runs over. Don't you let the devil get you to think negatively about God. Now I want you to hear something of Jesus saying to you, I prepare a table for you. Come and dine, come and dine, come and dine today as we, we remember how good a friend we have in Jesus. And you ought to feel good about God today. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this time. We want to feel good about you as we sing in Psalm 23, verse 5, as it talked about how there is the cup that runs over, how you prepare the table, how, how you anoint our head with oil. All these things are prepared. That means a, a blessing of overflowing, that you're there in, in, in every valley and shadow of death. And so we need to remember that as Christians, as we strive and we live on this side of life, how to feel good about you. 
even through those tough times. Oh, God, help us, strengthen us, and bless us in all that we do. We love you, we thank you, we proud this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're not a Christian today, I urge you to become one. To become a Christian, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. God is so good to us, boy, that uh, he has blessed us tremendously to our, our Facebook and famous Facebook audience. We want to say thank you for being a part of us. If you're not a Christian, I urge you to become a Christian. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. You've got to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. John 3, 16, you have everlasting life, eternal life. All right? You've got to repent, turn away from your sins. Turn away from your sins and give your life fully and freely to Jesus. Confess that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the, the Lord and Savior of your life. Uh, confess, Romans 10, 9 and following says, confess and believe in your heart and thou, thou shalt be saved. You're confessing the Lordship of Jesus and you're, uh, you're uh, telling Christ you believe in him and that you're, you're willing to do what he's saying. And you're he tell us to be baptized for the remission of our sin in Acts 2, 38 and remain faithful unto death. Revelation 2.10. How to feel good about the God is found in Psalm 23, verse 5. Let us all stand and have a verse for Psalm 23. Please. Please. I'm just a whore by his
that we each look into ourselves and we look within ourselves, Lord, and we do so with clean hands and a clear conscience. And we also, Lord, just thank you for this opportunity to worship in spirit and truth. The Bible also gives a scripture on giving. It tells us how to give. In 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 and 7. And the scripture reads, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the children giver. Let us give it this time. I like to stay here longer. It may be a lot of days. It was still still changing. Oh, life only is one way. But if my Savior called me to that sweet home on high, I'll be waiting for him. In glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'll be.
Let us all say amen. amen. This is the end of our 945 service. We want to thank Brother Wood for bringing a fine message to us this morning, reminding us of those things that on the page of inspiration. Also, we want to thank Brother Bruce for his lesson at 945. Let us, let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to come out once again to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray for those in this morning that want to be here, but this just couldn't be here for some other reason. We ask you to continue to bless us in the way that you want us to go, Father God. Watch over us and keep us from any harm and any hurt. We ask you to continue to bless this congregation as we continue to go forward in preaching your word to a dying generation. We thank you, Father God, for this day. We ask you to just watch over each and every one of us as we get ready to go our separate way, that we'll be able to return back on the next appointed time, not in harm or faith of one. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.